Hey guys, hope you had a, had a great weekend. Um, starting off right away with TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor. So here's the one-year chart. I was looking at it last week uh, for a long-term opportunity, uh, you know, buying some options because they're pretty cheap overall if you look at leaps. Um, so right now, support area is at around 107, 108. It's tapped at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times now. We're there over the last month and a half. It's fallen already about 13 and a half percent. So pretty nice discount on um, on TSM. And the whole thesis here is that basically they are one of the most important companies in the world because they make semiconductor chips for both NVIDIA, AMD, and a few other uh, companies as well, right? And right now they're kind of being thrown out with the China stocks like Alibaba, Tencent, JD, Baidu, et cetera, which is kind of wrong because TSM is from Taiwan, right? So looking at the option chain on TSM, I'll pull it up right now so you can look at it. Now, I'm looking at a longer term horizon because if you look at the chart again, I'll pull it up, right? So the chart is over here. So if you notice, whenever we tap these lows, it takes about a month for us to go from a low to a high, right? So for, for example, over here, we had a low of uh, 107.89 on March 25th. In this case, it was much faster, obviously. April the 5th, 127.40. Nice big gap over uh, up over here. There were earnings uh, here, obviously, which is why it pushed it that high. So that was a fast recovery. Over here, from hitting the low of 108.06 on May the 12th, it took us uh, to June the 15th, so about a month and a half, to hit the, the peak there of 122, right? That was a nice move off of the bottom right there. If you caught that bottom to the top move, 12.5%. Not a bad move at all, right? Um, the move over here obviously was a move of 17% or so. And when we broke out to new all-time highs back in December of last year, that move took us up to a high price of 135 a share by January 20th. So about three weeks over here, a week over here, a month and a half over here. And now who knows how long it'll take to recover. But right now, if you look at the average price target on, um, on TSM, the average price target <clears throat> is 140 or so. So pretty nice premium over the current price, right? And again, back, back to the option chain I was mentioning before on how to play this. Longer term, safer trade, obviously, because the market can be more volatile in September, October. So looking at the January call options right now, if you were to buy in the money call options, you can buy January contracts for about twelve fifty per contract at the hundred strike. That means your break even is one hundred and twelve fifty, which is only about four bucks over the current price. We were actually at the level just this week on Monday, Tuesday, right? Um, if you want to go shorter term, obviously you can do that as well. It carries more risk, obviously, because if it, if it pulls back and breaks below that one hundred eight support area, then obviously it can crash down below a hundred pretty fast too. But uh, I think it'll hold that one hundred eight area. I'm confident in that. And so I'm going to be taking in a bet this week on um, the January call options for about 12.50 or so. Hopefully it falls again tomorrow. Again, for maybe 12, 12 bucks or maybe 11.50. And then the plan would be to do a four months covered call using those contracts over the next roughly five months, right? So for example, you might go ahead and buy the 100 strike call over here. Your break even is 112.50. And then for, for September OPEX, you look at, for example, the 115 calls over here, sell these for 80 cents, re reduce your overall cost basis by 80 cents or so. So your risk would go from 12.50 down to 11.70, right? Obviously then you're capping your gains at 115 over the next month or so, but unless we see a massive spike up, this will still pay nicely. And if that were to occur, for example, you'd still make 330 on 11.70 risk or 28% return in, three and a half weeks, which is not too bad at all, right? Um, alternatively, if you wanted to go longer term, you could go out of the money as well because TSM should climb back to 140s within the next year or so. So if you were to go to January 2022, which is, uh, sorry, um, January 2023 over here, the uh, premiums are, are pretty expensive, but if you go out of the money, you can go to, you know, for example, the 120 strike is about 10, uh, 10 bucks or so, 11 bucks. And the 130 strike is eight bucks, right? Given the, the demand for semiconductors globally, expect that TSM would be much higher than it is right now, 
come 2023, right? Um, if you wanna be obviously shorter term, you can do that as well. October OPEX would be what I would look at. Um, and again, the $100 call options are about 975 right now. So your break even is 109.75, only about $1.50 above the current price. Um, if you go out of the money, you know, for example, the 110 strike, that's fine too. Just remember that you're gonna have higher time decay and more risk of it pulling back, which means that your contracts will, will, will decay in value faster because you have a lower delta, right? So I'm gonna go within the monies likely. So um, I catch the move back to, you know, 115, 120. My target would be, you know, 50% return or so in the next month and a half. Obviously, if I'm wrong and it breaks below like the 105 area and stays below there on heavy volume, I'll probably abandon the trade and take a loss. But that's what I'm looking at right now for, uh, for TSM. There are a few other names that are pretty beat up right now because, you know, right now it's hard to find good deals in the market given the valuations of many of the, of the indices. Although growth rates have, have, have picked up a fair bit, especially in tech. But one name that I like a fair bit as it's been beat up a lot is Las Vegas Sands, right? So here's a chart on LVS and I'll show you why, right? If you pull up the 10 year chart, we can see that the trading right now near the support area of 35 brought back from the March, uh, the March lows of last year, right? We only hit it temporarily, 33.30 was the low on uh, the week of March 16th, 2020, COVID lows. And right now we're at 37.79. Um, so looking at this right now, obviously it'd be a longer term play again, because as you can see from a, from a, from a dip, uh, dip bottom to a peak, it takes you know, about two to three years out. So you're gonna wanna play this longer term, either with the equity itself, which pays a small dividend, or you could play it with leaps as well, right? Uh, alternatively, if you wanted to get into the stock at a cheaper price, you could do cash secured puts uh, each month with the IV a bit higher and try to get a sign at a lower price, you know, below 35. So for example, looking at the option chain for LBS, you can see that going a month out, 35 strike put options yield 30, uh, 95 cents. That means that you, you'd be okay with owning LBS um, at 35 minus 95 cents, 34.05, right? That's only about 75 cents off of the lows we saw back in March of last year which provides a pretty phenomenal deal for Las Vegas Sands. Now, keep in mind, the reason why they've been dipping down is because um, they have casinos in Macau, which is in China, and they derive a lot of the revenue from Macau and Singapore as well. Singapore is fine, but because of COVID, been less busy, obviously, due to lower, lower travel rates. Uh, but they also have Vegas too. Vegas isn't so important for them anymore. Macau and Singapore are their, their diamonds in, uh, over, uh, overall. So those are their... their um, the, 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 the larger chunk of the revenues come from those countries, right? Um, if you want to trade this longer term, again, looking at the longest expiration dates you can look at, January 2023 call options, if you go in the money. So for example, if you go with, with the 30 strike, you get it for about 12 bucks, break even is 42. If it pops back up to, you know, uh, 60, 70 bucks a share by that time, then you're look, look at a three to four bagger position on your, uh, your call options, right? <clears throat> and Obviously, it doesn't seem like, you know, a very exciting play because it's a, it's a longer term trade, but this is a slow kind of trade that would take, you know, a year and a half, two years to transpire. And, you know, if you hit, you know, 100% return in a year, that's pretty damn phenomenal, right? Obviously. Now, if you combine that with some cash secure puts in the shorter, shorter term, you can, you can also shave off your risk like that as well. Obviously, you can be assigned on the CSPs, but not a bad way to shave off premium in the short term, given the higher IV, right? Like, IV right now is 47%. Historically, it's around 35%, right? Um, if you're looking at it, you know, uh, a few months out as well, for example, November, the 35 strikes yield 250 or so in premium, meaning that if you're to sell these, keep in mind it's three months out, so it won't bleed out too fast unless it recovers very fast. But effectively, you'd be buying LVS at 32.50, which is the lowest price it's traded at in the last 10 years, right? That's not too shabby at all. Uh, owning a casino that has um, exposure to both Asian and American markets, right? Um, so that's an interesting idea right here on, on LVS. There are numer numerous ways to play it. Right now at the IV high, you're gonna wanna be careful, obviously, because you're buying short-term contracts, you're paying a lot of premium. Like for example, if you're buying September OPEX contracts, even the 40 strikes are a dollar, which is you know three bucks out of the money or so, right? That can pay very well, obviously, if it recovers fast, but I wouldn't trade the short durations right now with the IV so high. If IV contracts, 
you can see it, you can see these contracts go up in smoke pretty fast, right? Um, that's my second idea for the week. And a third idea that I'm looking at as well, I mentioned it a few weeks ago, but um, Micron MU, they are pretty beat up as well. And here's the chart. So 10 year chart on Micron. <clears throat> they have over the past year hit new all time highs at 95. Pull the one year chart over here. So we can see that they've held support pretty heavily at the 70 area, right? 69, 70 area. So we've tested it pretty much one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 days, right? So 15 days of accumulation at this level right now. And Micron has a very low uh, forward price earnings ratio of only six. So very, very good valuation overall. Um, they dropped recently from the 83 area down to where they're at right now at 70, largely due to a, a, a report from a Morgan Stanley analyst um, saying that they're going to be um, hitting, a, hitting a trough soon in, in semi prices, right? In, in DRAM prices. And so um, a lot of people come out and debunk that, saying that they're looking at data wrong by analyzing only the PC market when that comprises only 10% of the revenues or so, right? So looking at the chart, we can see that there's a nice gap right here at 7503, which should be filled pretty soon, right? And what I'm looking at as well is that we have not seen a period of consolidation greater than seven days overall in the charts over the past year. And right now, Friday was day seven. So I'm expecting a big move to the upside, uh, pushing that gap close around 75. That could happen in the next couple of weeks. Um, obviously, though, there is a gap at the downside at 58. Uh, sorry, 5793 from November 13th. So if we do break below 70 and uh, and hold below that, there's a possibility we, we do gap fill at, at 58 or so, right? In which case it'd be very, very bullish overall, right? Again, this is a very good valuation on a strong company with good revenues, good cash flows as well. They mentioned in their last earnings report that be buying back stock um, when it makes sense to. I'm assuming that they'll probably be buying back stock around this time when it's cheaper versus when it's more expensive, right? So keep in mind, they hit 96 bucks a share uh, back in April, and that was their high. They've not gone back since then, but this chart reminds me a lot of AMD's chart where they consolidated in, in a certain area for a while before breaking back up to the upside, hitting, hitting the all-time highs. The um, average price target right now by analysts, again, I don't carry too much weight in that, but I'm just gonna mention any, uh, anyway, the average price target right now by analysts on uh, on Micron is 115 bucks and 59 cents. So a fair bit above the current price. And again, looking at the option chain, just to analyze some ideas here, right? Uh, IV is a bit lower than historical because they've consolidated over the last seven days. So given the lack of volatility, option prices have waned, which is nice if you wanna buy options longer term. Um, they report earnings, uh, end of September, right? So keep that in mind as well. If you're buying past September, there will be the binary event of earnings. And if they reiterate guidance or raise guidance again for the year ahead, that will obviously kibosh the whole MS report, which should send them back up to 85, 90 bucks a share in short order, you know, by January timeframe, I'd say, right? So looking at the stock here, there are numerous ways to play it. You can go shorter term with October OPEX, obviously factoring in earnings, right? The at the money contracts right now, 70 strike price are 410 per, uh, per contract. Break even is 7410. Not too bad at all. Decent open interest there. Liquidity is pretty good overall across the option chain. And what you could do is, is, is ride those into earnings, sell uh, a spread um, for the same week of earnings um, on the um, 80 strikes, for example. So let's say we push up to 75 by ER and they report on the Thursday before close. Um, sorry, after, uh, after close, what you look for then is the Friday OPEX contracts at the 80 strike perhaps to shave off some of your premium over here, right? Like if, for example, you could, you could pull in $1.50 or two bucks of premium out of the money on the IV spike, you're risking two bucks to make roughly eight bucks, which is four to one risk reward, which is great, right? Um, but obviously that requires a stock to push to 75 before the ER itself, right? So looking at the um, October OPEX again, you can do the 70 strike to the 80 strike if you wanted to. So if you want to do a, a spread, you could do, you know, long 70, short 80, right? That means you're risking, uh, risking three bucks to make seven bucks profit, which is not bad at all. Um, alternatively, you could do this beforehand as your, initial, uh, uh, your, your original position. And then if it moves up to 80 bucks prior to the earning report, you could sell an out of the money spread equidistant, so, so 10, 10 wide as well. 
against your long spread over here. So for example, let's say it pops to 75, 78 bucks and you're holding the spread over here. You want to reduce risk before earnings. Your risk is three bucks per contract. You could, for, you could perhaps sell the 85, 95 spread against that for let's say a dollar 50 or so, right? If you do that, then your risk goes down, down from three bucks to 150 to make maximum profit of 850, right? That's just an idea right there. Obviously it requires it to move up to uh, the 75, 78 area or so, right? Um, alternatively, if you want to go longer term with this, kind of set it and forget it, you can go with in the money options, right? So going out to like June of next year, for example, leaps, you could buy the 60 strikes, you know, right now, they're not, not cheap, 15 bucks per contract, break even 75, and then sell poor man's covered calls against them every month or so out of the money at the 0.2 delta or, lo or lower. And obviously, you know, uh, wait for spikes in IV before you actually sell premium because you're going to get a lot more premium there, right? So just some ideas here. Uh, one other idea could be to sell cash secured puts on uh, ME before the ER, but keep in mind I, the IV is kind of waned right now. So put premiums aren't very high. If you're looking at September OPEX, which is before the earning, earning date, there's not a lot of premium there overall. I mean, 65 strikes are giving you about 78 cents in three weeks. It's not too bad overall if you're okay owning the stock at $64 and change. Uh, but obviously, if it breaks down to 65, expect it to go to 58, right? So at that point, I'd be waiting for 58 to fill before. I, uh, I went long in some more contracts, right? And again, important to remember guys, scale into your positions, right? You don't need to buy all at once. If you're earmarking, for example, you know, 10% of your, of your, of your uh, or sorry, uh, not 10% of your portfolio, 10K, for example, right? Let's say, um, why not split it up into, you know, into five buys of 2K a piece, right? So for example, if you're buying call options for October at, at the money, you might say, you know what? I'm gonna buy five contracts right here for four bucks each. That's two grand, right? It falls a bit over the next couple of weeks and you can buy, let's say, you know, you can buy them for, for like $2 per contract, right? At that point, you can buy 10 contracts for the same two grand, right? So you bought, you bought five for, for two grand and you bought 10 for two grand and you have 15 overall at 4K a piece. Now your average cost is roughly $3. Uh, yeah, it's, it's about, three, uh, sorry, no, $2.50, and, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, right? Let me show the math on that to make sure that's correct. Um, so. 15, yeah, so 266, right, per contract. So your break even at that point would be 7266, which is not too bad at all. Obviously, you can keep on averaging down if, you, if it keeps dropping, but at a certain point, you need to remember that um, the play might not, might, not, might not pan out, especially if it breaks below 70, it stays below that, right? Because obviously that would indicate a possible gap to like 58, right? What I'm saying is that managing your risk, part of managing your risk is about staggering your buys and laddering in and also laddering out. So for example, if you bought in a bunch of contracts, average of you know, two, three bucks a, uh, a contract, and then it pops before the ER, you don't need to sell the whole position, but shaving your position down and selling some of it is prudent, especially before a binary event such as earnings. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're doing all your trading, because um, buying at one price and selling at one price usually results in bad outcomes. If you're buying, for example, at one, one price and you put your whole position in, at the onset and it falls and it goes, and goes against you, when that happens, you can't average down. And oftentimes, you know, if, if you're waiting for a bottom to hit, you might see your position go red for a few weeks if you're buying a few months out before you actually see profit, which means that if you're averaging down in segments, you're better off buying in chunks instead of buying all at once, right? And then obviously when it pushes back up again, you wanna be selling in chunks, not all at once as well, because one thing that can be one of the most frustrating and painful emotions to feel is the, the emotion of, of um, regret by selling too soon, right? So, you know, I myself have sold numerous times way too soon and I feel a lot more pain from that than I do from taking a loss on a position, which is, you know, interesting, right? But at the same time, you wanna be able to ride your winners, which is how you create asymmetries of risk, right? If you're gonna cut your, win, uh, your winners, you know, super early and hold your losers in long-term, in the long run, you're gonna lose money, right? So. What you want to do, for example, is let's say you bought, you know, average a bunch of contracts. Let's say you bought like 40 contracts around two bucks per contract on a pullback. All of a sudden, MU pops up before ER to 74. Now you're up double. You sell half and you remove, you remove all your risk. All your original risk is gone. Now you have <clears throat> no risk at all, but you have a position that has upside. If it pops up, you have a lot of upside and you have no original downside at all, right? So just something to consider when, uh, when you're making your trades, right? All right, um, next up, we're gonna talk about AMD.
So looking at AMD as well, they had a bad week last week. They're pulling back and creating a new support area on their chart. I will pull it up right now. So here's AMD. Um, again, I've been talking about this in the past few months. It was in a nice range between 75 or so and 95 for about a year. Smashed earnings broke up to a new all-time high of 122. Pulled back down since then to the 104 area. Hit a low uh, a few days ago of 102 back on August the 19th. Now it's at 104.78, right? Expect the former all-time high of 99.23 to act as support. So if you do pull back down to that 100 area, that's a pretty good area of support, I think, anyway. And uh, that would be an area to go long at, right? But again, um, AMD is very volatile, right? It moves a lot. It moves you know, from 110 to 105 to 110 to 102 to 110, right? So a lot of volatility, right? Um, you want to look at AMD on longer term time horizons. If you're trading short term, obviously you need to be getting in there for scalps and not be too greedy. But looking at the one month chart, you can see over here, a nice base is forming right around 102.50 or so, right? So that would be a decent buy area for anyone that, that, that bought before ER, sold off on that pop to 120 or so and wants to get back in. Looking at the option chain now, I'll pull it up right here. We have AMD over here, right? Looking at uh, the October options, I wouldn't go short term because again, historically September is a bad month for the markets. So remember that as well. Um, the $100 strike call options in the monies are about $9.30. They hit a low last week of $8.05, I believe. And they were trading at, at, at 20 bucks, you know, not too long ago. <clears throat> but the reason why you wanna go in the money versus out of the money is because you're gonna get a lot more uh, time decay on out of the monies and also a lot more bleed on the IV if it pulls back, right? So right now the IV is 41%. Historically, it's showing 48% over here, but keep in mind before this massive pop to 122, the HV was around 32%. So we are still pretty high overall, right? In terms of IV, which is why premiums are much more juiced than they normally are, right? Um, I'll go minimum October, or if, again, if you're, if, you're, if you're a more passive investor and you wanna trade longer term and not really worry about the peaks and valleys you know, of the short term, Go out to next June, for example, right? Go out to next January if you want, 2023, right? June of next year, if you buy the $100 call options, they're 100 and, sorry, they're $18 and change per contract. Break even is 118, which we were at you know, a few weeks ago. Um, AMD should be much higher than it is right, right now by June of next year. Expect a push to 140, 150, perhaps even by that time. If you want to sell, you know, poor man's covered calls, you could do, you do so opportunistically by waiting for a pop in the stock before selling against your, uh, your call options. That's one idea as well, right? So obviously um, play it carefully and only risk what you can afford to lose. And, and any of the, these ideas I mentioned, because obviously I could be wrong. Um, I'm just looking at, at, uh, at, at, at tickers right now that look decent for me overall, because in the market, there's not many good deals to be had. So, you know, um, MU, LBS, TSM, those look pretty solid from a value standpoint. And um, next up, we're gonna look at Apple, right? So Apple hit all-time highs last week and then pulled back, right? Here's the chart, I'm gonna pull up on Apple. So yeah, so last week we hit an all-time high, uh, an all-time high of 151.50 on Tuesday, pulled back down to 144 and change. And over, uh, over Thursday and Friday, recovered to 148 and change. Now keep in mind, Apple has their iPhone, iPad, and uh, AirPods launch, as well as a new uh, iPod, uh, uh, new iWatch launch in September. That should be a catalyst event. Usually they sell off after the event, but they usually rally into the actual event itself, right? So looking at Apple into the event, you don't want to look at options that go past September into October, perhaps, right? And right now, the premiums aren't that, aren't that bad. IV is a little bit higher than historical right now. So looking at October OPEX, looking at either in the monies if you wanted to, for example, the 140 strikes for 11 bucks, break even is 151, which is, it was that last week. If you pop off to like 155, that's not, not a bad return, you know, four bucks overall for 11 risk. Not great asymmetry risk overall. If you want to go with, uh, out of the monies, for example, the 150 strike, you can go long here, and you can also go short if you wanted to the 160s. So you're risking a little bit less money, right? You're risking about three dollars and twenty cents. Maximum profit is six eighty or so per contract, right? Um, I think we're gonna, we'll see a push up to one fifty five area before we pull back down to one forty five again. 
That's just my uh, my current journal trade right now that I'm looking at right now overall for the plan for Apple. Uh, but there, there are many ways to trade, to trade Apple as well. So, you know, you, you do CSPs if you want to own it at a lower price. You can go with Leaps if you want as well. Um, IV right now is a little bit higher than usual. So I'd maybe wait for it to, to, uh, to die down a little bit before getting in. But if you want to trade it shorter term, October is what I would focus on, not the shorter term than, than that, because obviously buying, you know, a week out or two weeks out, you can easily lose all your money that you put into to the trade. Right, keep that in mind too. Um, also looking at some of the China stocks, uh, namely Alibaba. So Baba got beat to crap last week. Um, I've been debating this, you know, for, for a while with a few people in, in, our, in our group. And, you know, my take here is that it's, it's not really easy to invest right now in Chinese stocks because it doesn't matter how good they are fundamentally, you know, revenue wise, uh, profit wise, it doesn't really matter because these stocks are variable interest entities located in the Cayman Islands. So you don't actually own any actual shares in the company itself, right? You own shares in a shell company in the Cayman Islands, right? So Baba could do very well, you know, uh, financially as a business. Meanwhile, the stock price keeps on going down and down and down. That's why I stayed out of it, you know, for the past uh, month or so. I haven't, I haven't bought anything at all whatsoever, you know, aside, aside from a scalp uh, last week on Friday. But uh, nothing longer term, right? And now we have a few gaps above. There might be some decent opportunities to scalp, you know, over, over a few days back to the upside because we have, you know, one, two, three, four, five. We have, we have um, six gaps on the chart in the last roughly three weeks. And if you go beyond that, we have seven, eight gaps, right? So a gap at 214, a gap at one nine, uh, sorry, a gap at 206. We have a gap at 200. We have a gap at 195, one, uh, 191, what is this, 188, 183, and then at 172 or so, right? So at some point, you're going to see a reprieve and, and probably pop back up to like one, the 180 area, but... Um, you don't want to be holding this longer term, probably. Um, you know, again, I could be wrong and it might pop back to, back to 300 bucks pretty fast. But from my standpoint right here and from my discussions with other fund managers, I don't think it's a very investable asset right now, right? Um, the, the CCP can do whatever they want, announce whatever they want at any moment in time. And I can kibosh any investment you have. And there are a lot of people bag holding right now from, you know, mid 200s on Baba. And, you know, I mean, hopefully it goes back up there again, but there's a chance it doesn't go back, back up there ever again right? There's a chance of that happening, right? So keep that in mind. I won't recommend any trades here, obviously, because um, I don't recommend trading it right now. But obviously, if you're, if you're going to trade um, Baba, manage your risk very well and be prepared to lose whatever you put in, okay? Um, last but not least, today we'll look at SPY. So SPY. So SPY hit all-time highs last week before pulling back. Here's the chart, all right? So we had an all-time high last week of 4.47.11 uh, on Monday. Following that, we pulled back on news the Fed might taper earlier than expected. So we pulled back down to 4.36 on Thursday, rallied hard to 4.43 and change um, on Friday as well. And again, right now, remember, uh, September, October are usually the, the worst months for the market overall, performance-wise. So you want to look at maybe being a bit neutral or a bit more defensive into these months, right? Keep in mind, this year we've had a great, great year overall in the broad markets, NASDAQ, S&P, the Dow, the Russell, they've all performed very, very well. If you're up a lot right now, you don't want to risk losing that money, right? You want to be protecting your gains, playing very defensively, either being very heavy in cash or owning put options to hedge your portfolio overall, right? I don't re recommend usually buying put options to hedge your portfolio because most of the time you're, you're paying insurance for, for something that probably won't uh, pan out. But looking at butterflies um, on SPY for you know a month out or so, if you're looking at the OPEX for September or October, namely October here, right? There are some decent ideas you can, you can trade on, on right here. So either using ratio spreads on the put side or butterflies as well, right? So for example, let's say we pull back down five to 8% over the next two months at some point. Keep in mind over the last five years, we've had at least two pullbacks a year that averaged between five and 12%, right? So pretty decent uh, pullbacks. If we pull back from the current level, 5%, we'll shave off from 443 area down to 420 or so, right? If you pull back 10%, expect us to pull back down to around 395-ish. 
So let's split the difference there and say roughly 410, right? So if our target is 410, perhaps on the downside on a pullback, we need to go with a, a position that has low risk in the event that we, we don't pull back at all. So we don't spend too much money and lose that money, right? But we have, we have some optionality there in terms of having a hedge in place in the event the market pulls back down over the next couple of months. So what might be a decent trade would be perhaps doing some, some kind of put ratio spread. For example, looking at the 430 long put options, selling two of the 410 put options against that, or even two of the 400 put options against that. If you go with the 400s, you're incurring a little bit of a debit overall, right? But not that much of a debit that it would ruin your portfolio if you were to uh, lose the whole position. So for example, you would buy one October 430 put option, and you would sell two 400 strike put options for the same expiration date. It's called a put ratio spread. I mentioned it a few times already, guys, right? So the cost here is about 75 cents and your upside here is massive, right? Your upside here is 30 bucks minus 75 cents. So your upside here is $29 and 25 cents, right? So pretty massive upside overall. Obviously um, anything below uh, 400 minus 30, which is uh, 370 plus um, 75, anything below 370, 75 would result in a loss greater than 75 cents, right? But anything above 430 would result in a loss of only 75 cents per position, right? If we pull back down to, for example, let's say we pull back down to 410, you make 20 bucks per contract on risk of 75 cents. Not bad at all, right? So this position I think would be pretty appropriate if you want to hedge into October with a little bit of a little bit of um, uh, put position with not so much risk overall premium wise. If you want to be, you know, I guess a little bit more conservative in terms of having no debit at all, but having a lower probability of payoff in the event that it pulls back heavily, you go for, with, for example, the 405 strike, right? And that should be no debit whatsoever at all. So yeah, so 405 um, on the short side here, if you were to short two contracts there, long one at the 430, you'd have an actual credit of about 15 cents or so, right? Meaning that if SPY doesn't pull back at all below 430, you still make 15 cents per contract, right? If it pulls back down to 405, your maximum profit would be 25 bucks per contract plus 15 cents, right? Obviously, then your second break even would be 405 minus 25, which is 380. But obviously, that would also be outside of the expected uh, pullback down below 10%, right? Uh, to the downside, because current pullback would be um, 395 or so on the uh, on the SPY, you pull back by 10%. So just some ideas here for how to hedge into October. Again, there are numerous ways you can hedge. You know, being heavy in cash is a hedge. Um, owning um, assets that, that move inversely. So, for example, you know, if you, if you, own, you know, own bonds or gold, for example, or silver, versus uh, market instruments, um, or 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 um, you know, tech stocks, for example, um, they move inversely, right? Typically, obviously, in, in a massive sell-off, expect the dollar to push up heavily. And um, that would have, you know, obviously effects on the bond as well, bond yields as well. So TLT, for example, if you look at that too. Um, but SPY could be a pretty simple hedge if you want to use that. If you're heavy in tech, use triple Q ETF obviously instead. If, you, if you're heavy in Russell uh, names, you can use IWM instead as well, obviously too, right? So um, I'm going to end it here. Hopefully you have a great week, guys, and manage your risk well. Any questions, drop them below. And please manage your, uh, please make sure that you do your own, your own uh, homework before you take anything I say into consideration. These are all just ideas for you guys to, to learn from. They're not investment advice whatsoever, okay? Have a great week and we'll do some Q&A right now.